This video is on normal cytic anemias. So normal cytic. And normal cytic anemias have an MCV of A200. This is normal. So these are normal sized red blood cells. You just don't have enough of them. Why don't you have enough? Well, it's either because you're not making enough, so underproduction, or for some reason you're destroying your blood cells. So I'll say destruction. These are the two mechanisms of how you can have normal sized red blood cells, just not enough of them. Another way we can look at this is we can call destruction hemolytic, and we can call underproduction non hemolytic. So there's a lot of different ways we can, I guess, put a different name to the same thing. Another way we can put a different name to the same thing is by looking at the reticulocytes. Whether they have increased reticulocytes or decreased reticulocytes, what does that mean? Recall reticulocytes are immature red blood cells. So reticulocytes are immature red blood cells and then after a while they'll mature and become fully formed red blood cells. If you require more red blood cells, then you'll rev up your reticulocytes, uh, rev up these immature red blood cells, and sometimes it can leak out into your bone marrow, so you'll see increased reticulocytes. So for example, if you have destruction of your red blood cells and you need more red blood cells, you'll rev this up and you'll have increased reticulocytes. So increased reticulocytes. You'll see that in your blood. In underproduction, for some reason you're just not making enough. Uh, if you need to make more, You'll try and rev up your reticulocytes, but for some reason you just can't make them. So you'll try, but you won't see any reticulocytes. There's a problem in the production of your red blood cells. That's the name of the game for underproduction, and that is going to be the subject of this video. In this video, we're going to talk about underproduction, what causes that. And then in our next couple of videos, we're going to talk about what causes destruction of our red blood cells. So let's focus on underproduction. Some causes we've already talked about, some causes include iron deficiency and anemia of chronic disease. We said that early on these cause normal cytic anemias. And it's because you're either lacking iron or iron sequestered and you just you're just not making red blood cells as you should. So we talked about that, I'll say early, just to put an emphasis on it. But the new ones I want to talk about is aplastic anemia, aplastic anemia, and chronic kidney disease. Aplastic anemia is when you have underproduction because underproduction because your hematic poietic stem cells have been destroyed in your bone marrow. And because your hematic poietic stem cells are destroyed, you get pancytopenia. Pancytopenia. If you do a bone marrow aspiration, you're going to get a dry tap, so dry bone marrow and when you've lost these stem cells then the fat in your bone marrow will take its place and you're going to see fatty infiltrate so you're going to see a very fatty bone marrow that's a very classical finding and i have a picture of it in my notes that is aplastic anemia it can be confused with something else called pear red blood cell aplasia what the heck is that? You can tell by the name what it is. It's when you just don't make red blood cells. And that's a problem in your red blood cell stem cell. Not your hematopoietic stem cells that make everything else. This is just red blood cells. So you have pure red blood cell aplasia. What kind of lab findings will you see? Decrease red blood cells. And it's associated with thymomas. So don't get that confused. That's just pure red blood cells. This is pancytopenia. Your hematic poietic stem cells have been destroyed. Let's go back, talk about aplastic anemia. What are the lab findings? Well, how about pancytopenia? And you're also gonna have increased EPO. The kidneys are gonna sense you don't have your anemic and you're gonna try and make more EPO. Does it really help? Not really, because you don't have any stem cells to produce blood in the first place. What causes aplastic anemia? Unfortunately, we're not quite sure. Uh, half the cases, we don't even have a guess. So half the cases are unknown. The other half, so I'll say half cases unknown. The other half are either due to autoimmune destruction of your bone marrow or from some sort of insult to your bone marrow. The most common cause that we do know of is gonna be drugs. So 
many drugs are toxic or have side effects. Some are just toxic to your bone marrow. So these are going to be like chemo drugs. Um, a big one you should know is the antibiotic chloramphenicol. That is a big one. You can have exposure to toxic substances. So things like benzenes, these are things found in smoke and gas and diesel fuel and stuff like that. So benzenes, DDT, which is a pesticide. Pesticides are just no good. You can have viruses. So viral insults, we talked about parvovirus in our previous video. So parvo, um, acute hepatitis can cause this, whether it actually affects your bone marrow or is your body responding to acute hepatitis and it like autoimmune destroys your bone marrow. Acute hep is associated with this. You can have whole body radiation, that's a no brainer. You just wipe out your bone marrow. Whole body radiation. Whatever the case may be, your bone marrow is shot and the only cure is a bone marrow transplant. You're trying to transplant some new hepatopoietic stem cells. So I'll say treatment. Bone marrow transplant. You can also give immunosuppressants if you think it's an autoimmune cause, so immunosuppressants. And you can try and stimulate the bone marrow, whatever's left of it, with things like GM, CSF. And recall that stimulates your neutrophils. Yeah, um, not much more, but I guess that's, that's better than nothing. So that is aplastic anemia. Chronic kidney disease. Why does chronic kidney disease cause underproduction of red blood cells? Can you think of why? Your kidneys make EPO. That's like the lifeblood of your, <laughs> no pun intended. That's like the, the cause of bl blood production in the first place. That's a hormone that causes blood production. So without EPO, without good functioning kidneys, EPO is decreased. So lab findings you're gonna see, you're gonna see normal cytic anemia. That's our topic of the video. Normal cytic anemia, decreased EPO which is like a dead giveaway. If you have anemia, you expect EPO to be increased. So if they give you a lab finding of decreased EPO, you know something's wrong with your kidneys. Your kidneys are just shot. So they can just give you that and you should be able to figure that out. Uh, something you see are these cells, these red blood cells that have these cytoplasmic projections outside called echinocytes. It's not specific to uh, chronic kidney disease. Any type of pH changes or metabolic changes in the fluid will cause the membrane to blub a little. And so that's what causes the echinocytes. That's seen on peripheral blood smear. Here's an important note. Just because you have decreased EPO, don't just think, okay, I'm gonna have decreased red blood cells and nothing else. That's not true. In chronic kidney disease, one of the, one of the prominent things you see is thrombocytopenia low platelets why is that increase if you can't clear toxins because your kidneys are shot you build up toxic metabolites and those toxic metabolites are very toxic to your platelets so your platelets go down and you start getting bleeding disorders very important that you know that the toxic metabolites build up and cause thrombocytopenia so don't just think oh decreased epo must just be decreased red blood cells no you also get decreased Platelets. And if you do dialysis and get rid of those uh, toxins, then your platelet counts will go back up. That does it for this portion of normal cytic anemias. Next portion, we're going to talk about what causes destruction of our red blood cells. Until then, see you next time.